Thanks for clicking. 56% of Canadians say they have postponed their real estate search due to rising interest rates. This according to the Financial Post's account of a recent survey commissioned by Rural LePage. It's just a matter of time. The survey, commissioned by Rural LePage, well known for its unbiased investigations, asked respondents about their plans to buy a home and the extent to which those plans have been affected by the Bank of Canada's rate hiking cycle. And, in a testament to journalistic integrity, the Financial Post doubled down on the findings from Rural LePage, noting that of the 56% of Canadian adults that put off their home buying search, half of them are just waiting for rates to drop before jumping back in. Except, that's exactly not what the poll says. And yet another stellar example of what we've covered so many times on this channel, the headlines do not match the data. In fact, the article doesn't even match the data. All of you pass. Good work. All right. All right. So what I want to do today is go over the Financial Post article, take a look at what the Royal LePage findings actually say, because someone should, and then we'll do a bit of investigative journalism ourselves. Try to set a good example. Speaking of data, this is a new month, so we are eagerly awaiting the release of February's real estate data out from the local boards, and we'll obviously have an update out on that data on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, let's get into this article. Onto the article, as mentioned, the Financial Post's account of a recent survey from Royal LePage stresses that potential home buyers are just waiting on the sidelines for a drop in interest rates, with 56% of Canadians saying they postponed their home search due to the rise in the cost of borrowing. The article recounts that of that 56% of Canadians that put their home search on hold due to the rising cost of borrowing, 10% said it would only take a 25 basis point rate cut to jump back in with another 18% willing to jump in once rates drop between 50 and 100 basis points. So, if half of the Canadian population put off buying a home due to rising rates, but 28% of that half are going to jump back in once rates drop by 25 to 100 basis points, which, according to some articles by the Financial Post, that could happen at any time, then that is going to be an awful lot of demand coming to the market once the Bank of Canada cuts rates. I hate to say that I told you so, if, that is, you trust the headlines, and the article, apparently. But if you look at the actual survey results, you'll find that 71% of Canadians had no plans to buy a home in the first place, and only 15% of respondents had postponed their plans. So where did the Financial Post get that 56% headline-grabbing news? Well, they did get it from the survey, which found that 27% of Canadians have been active in the market over the past two years, and of them, 56% have been forced to postpone their property search. So, rather than 56% of Canadians putting off their plans to buy homes, it's 56% of 27%, or 15.2%. So, if Canada's population were represented by 100 people, only 27 of them would have been active in the market to begin with, and of those 27, 15.2 put off plans to buy a home, not the 56 listed in the headline. Meaning, the headline should have read, 15% of Canadians put off plans to buy a home due to higher interest rates. Or, half of potential real estate buyers have left the market. Though, that doesn't exactly support the FOMO narrative, does it? Don't you dare! In this realization that is 56% of 27% changes a lot of the other numbers as well. Remember that 10% that said they were going to jump into the market once the Bank of Canada cuts rates? Well, that's 10% of 15%, or 1.5. So again, if Canada were 100 people, 1.5 of them are going to jump back into the market when the Bank of Canada cuts rates. Now, Royal LePage's headline does not mention these breakdown of the survey results either, simply noting that half of sideline buyers are waiting for interest rate cuts to resume their purchase plans. But Royal LePage is a company, it's a business, it's not a news organization. It's free to present its own data however it chooses. And although the tone of the headline doesn't exactly match the results, it's also not hiding anything here either. But what about actual buyer intent? 51% of consumers told us that when the Bank of Canada begins to lower rates, they would re-enter the market. And this is neither here nor there, but things must be getting tough. Someone want to do a GoFundMe to get Phil Soper a microphone? No f***ing way. Never. Fair enough. Now, while the Financial Post focused almost solely on conclusions drawn from a false premise, let's take a brief look at the article to see what the data actually says. 
First, some of it doesn't even make any sense. On the one hand, on the one question, of those respondents that have put off buying a home due to higher rates, the 56% of the 27%, 26% of those have abandoned their plans for the time being. On the other hand, when the survey asked respondents how far rates would have to fall to get them to jump back into the market, 20% said they no longer plan to purchase. 26% of respondents gave up on the idea of buying a home on the one hand, and 20% gave up on the other. So, quite obviously, one quarter of Canadians never want to buy a home again. Stop the pressures! No, but seriously, this does point to some of the problems associated with gleaning too much from online polls. Speaking of discrepancies and problems with the survey, did anyone notice that there was no mention in this survey of buyers exiting the market due to prices? I didn't read it. We know. But if you look at the data, the data we received anyway, there's absolutely zero mention in the survey, zero ability for respondents to say that they exited the market for anything other than the Bank of Canada raising rates. Were respondents just not asked this question intentionally, pointing only to the Bank of Canada being the problem, or did it not occur to anyone who designed the poll that buyers might hold off on paying the $170,000 increase in the benchmark price that we've seen since March of 2020? I suppose then the headlines may have had to read 784% of Canadians waiting for prices to come down before they buy. But that doesn't exactly fit the narrative, does it? And it certainly doesn't push FOMO. So, on the one hand, we have the headline saying 56% of Canadians have left the market due to higher interest rates, and then we have the actual data which showed that that number was only 15%. Normally, I would just think that the headline was a misprint, but then the article doubled down in its contents. Now, we've talked at great length on this channel about the media and how headlines don't exactly match the data when it comes to the real estate industry or when it comes to the Bank of Canada, but this one definitely stands out. Was this done purposefully or did the author just not bother to read the poll? Which would be worse? Regardless, Canadians shouldn't have to go this far down the rabbit hole to double check news coming from its financial news organizations. And in fact, I suspect that Canadians don't go this far down the rabbit hole relying to a large extent on the headlines. As of the recording of this video, the Financial Post Twitter page has over 1,000 views on this article, and the video we saw from Phil Soper has almost 8,000 views on Instagram, including a lot of likes from professionals all across the real estate industry. And nowhere except deep in the data, not even that deep, you just had to read the article, I won't do it. Do we find that it's actually only 15% of Canadians that put off buying a home? Which is still fairly substantial, it doesn't need to be misrepresented. Now, all of this isn't to say that home buyers won't jump in once the Bank of Canada starts lowering rates, or even before, given the industry-wide FOMO, but it is to say that the data is not being reported accurately. The headlines make the FOMO seem much, much worse than the data actually tells us. With that said, we will continue to track Canada's real estate data on this channel, picking apart these headlines whenever we can. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.